the third Sunday of Lent. I invite you all to stand and join with me in singing Blessed Be the Lord. It's number four. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians. 
and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, But when I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me, What is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, This is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus am I to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable, there once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. When and when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a man in India who is a master gardener, and his story is really rather remarkable. He's now over 80 years old, and he and his family manage a mango orchard. When he was a young man, when he was about 17 years old, he saw a crossbred rose bush in a friend's garden. He saw that that particular rose bush had multiple varieties, all different colors of Roses, And so it started him thinking a little bit, gave him an idea, a little bit of an inspiration, and he began grafting varieties of mangoes onto the one tree in his orchard. Today, today, more than six decades later, this gardener has created a mango tree that bears 300 different varieties of mangoes. The tree is massive. Its branches are weighed down with pink and purple, orange and yellow and green mangoes. And the good news is, mangoes are free for any visitors to his orchard. Story of this great fruitful mango tree is something we can kind of smile at, something we can take delight in, because we see someone who was rather enterprising, someone who was inspired, someone who kind of took a chance, was very creative. We don't need to be a horticulturalist to be that kind of person. And so that kind of creativity and persistence, determination, which is at work over these decades, has produced this great fruit from this mango tree. And the results are truly amazing. So much so that people come from around to see the the fruit that this man has produced with this tree. And so somehow you can't help but be happy by the story, help be happy by the example of this man who has produced great fruit. The gospel today, we have a different, an entirely different kind of tree. It's a tree that bears no fruit. It's a fig tree and is supposed to be bearing fruit. The owner is a bit fed up with the tree, wants to have the gardener just chop it down, but because the, the expectation has not been met, the fig tree should be producing figs. Why isn't it happening? It's not fulfilling its purpose. The gardener, the gardener takes a less severe position than the, the owner, the master. The gardener says, well, maybe we should give the tree a little bit more time. Maybe if I till the soil around it, maybe if I put a bit of fertilizer, a 
around that tree, well, that it will produce. In other words, he's saying to the owner, don't, don't give up on the tree. Let's give that tree another opportunity to bear fruit. My brothers and sisters, each of us is a little bit like the tree. We're like the fig tree in the garden. And in this parable, we kind of just take the place of the tree. So what happens to that tree happens to us. And so the, the owner comes by and says to us, are you, are you producing any fruit? Are you fruitful in any way? Is my life sort of dormant and unproductive? Am I in some kind of holding pattern where it's kind of stagnant? Am I just surviving? What is it that I am called to, to see in the parable? What is it that I can learn from Jesus' words today? I think one lesson is a bit stark, but one lesson is that life is short and that any good that we want to do in this life, any good thing we want to accomplish, we have to begin now. Any good thing that I want to do in my life, I can't put it off. Better do it now. I'm sure our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, as they're leaving their homes and seeking shelter and safety and wondering what's going to happen next, realize that they have that time of today, that they've been given that opportunity. And so too, God wants us to take the gifts and talents we've been given, and in a certain sense, He very patiently steps back, allows us to discover what those gifts and talents are, and then put them to work, he waits to see if something's happening. Like the fig tree, though, we're all on borrowed time because it's implied in the parable, I think. It's kind of a warning about complacency, about laziness, about a carefree attitude that would put off the good that we want to do today, but maybe don't get around to doing. There's that expression, I think it goes something like this, yesterday is gone, tomorrow hasn't arrived, and well, that's really all we have is, is today, the time that the Lord has given us this day. And in the beginning of that gospel passage, he, he's referring to a couple of incidents that must have happened in that contemporary time where people had something tragic, terrible happen to them that they weren't really expecting. And then a second lesson, I think, is that our fruitfulness really is the measure of how we reflect the very life of God. If we're desiring to imitate God in our lives, if we're desiring to follow His example, when, well then we realize, of course, that we're following a God who is the Creator, a God who continues to create, a God who continues to be creative in my life. So for me to imitate God means I want to take on that role of being a Creator, co-creator with God, someone who can bring about something new in the book of Genesis, you'll remember God spoke the Word, and it was created. We were created by God speaking a Word. And so we are all the result of God's work. We're all the result of God's creation. God has been busy about being creative, being our Creator, and we see the amazing work around us of what God has done. God's work is to create, to bring new life, and so He continues that work even today. The very breath I take this day is the result of God's creative work in my life, sustaining my life. And so we cooperate with God's plan, and we desire to imitate God in that way. Otherwise, what we're doing is what the owner accuses the, the tree of doing, and that is just using the soil. You're just planted there using the soil, using what I've given you and not producing anything from it. It's really a, an opportunity for us to recognize the source of our power, always that is God and how we can imitate God. And in some ways, the tree that's unfruitful is not connected to the power source. So our own ability to be creative means that we are connected to the Creator,
connected to the source of all power. God's the source of all life, the source of all growth. If, if I'm going to imitate God in any way that looks like that, it's going to be because I'm, I'm plugged in, I'm connected. I'm connected to the Creator, and some of that creation that God desires to bring about is going to happen through my efforts in cooperation with what God continues to do in our world. And finally, a third thought about the parable, a fruitful life, a fruitful life, your life and my life, I think in many ways is, is meant to leave a, a powerful legacy. It's meant to leave kind of a positive, powerful impression on the people we leave behind. I don't know if we often think about a legacy. It's sometimes a, a word that's used in estate planning and what we're going to do with, you know, the, 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 the wealth or the, the resources that we have. I suppose the reality is that not, not many of us, I don't think, not many of us will have a, a building on a college campus named after us. I don't think. If you are one of those people, I'd like to meet you at the end of Mass. <laughs> but I suspect not many of us will have our name on a building. And yet, we do want to leave a kind of legacy behind us. We want to leave that legacy gift. We want to make that powerful, positive impact on all of the people that we encounter in our life. Our family, friends, parishioners, co-workers, those in our social circles, we want to leave something of our fruitfulness with them. That it somehow is recognized, acknowledged, has produced some good, not only for me, but for the various communities I might belong to. My productivity can in fact enhance the, the, the life of others. And I want to be able to leave something of that behind. Our fruitful lives, I think, begin when we place our very lives into God's hands. And it continues when I desire or have that desire to imitate God and being creative. And then finally it's reflected in the legacy that I leave behind. That legacy might be in a particular kind of inspiration that I've given to others, perhaps children or grandchildren or people who have come to know me, my co-workers. Don't we sometimes say that when a person passes, that we, we hope that their spirit continues on. Maybe they were someone who was very generous or someone outgoing, someone very giving, someone who produced a great deal, and we, we think, how can that go on? And there is that notion of that legacy going on after we, in fact, are no longer here, when we've passed. My brothers and sisters, the gospel, and particularly the parable, can be a bit stark. Sometimes Lent can be a bit like that. It places before us the reality of the brevity of our lives and the call to be productive in the time that we have been given, none of us knowing what that time will be. But knowing that the time is now, it's what we have, not five years from now, it's now. Even in the midst of my responsibilities, things I have to do, things that are before me that I'm very aware of, maybe our eyes are, are trying to be opened by our God to see where I might indeed be even more productive as I place myself in His hands. Lent is that time for us always to take that good look at ourselves in the parable of the fig tree that makes it for one more year is an opportunity for us to reflect on how productive we've been in our lives. I believe in one God, the Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident of God's love and compassion, let us present our prayer for God's intervention in our daily lives. For our Holy Father, our bishops, priests, deacons, and religious that in their ministry they may be strengthened by the power of God working in our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world, that world leaders will seek to find an end to the fear of the war and terrorism, especially in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that during this Lenten season, we will help to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, and comfort those in despair. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our brothers and sisters who, have, who will be initiated into the church this Easter, that they may also grow close to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions of our parish circle of prayer, and for all those suffering the effects of the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Edward Poon, for whom we offer this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Listen to the prayer of your holy people, O God of mercy and goodness. Your law is perfect, refreshing even the worst of sinners. Bring your healing love to our broken world and inspire us to live as witnesses of the Gospel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Spirit, 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ, may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Bernard and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, Robert his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we remember Edward Cooney. Give them, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
those who join us at home, we pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you are already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. So let me never be separated from you.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Just a few announcements. We thank you always for your weekly contributions. Baskets are at the doors and there are bulletins there to please take home. Catholic Charity Peel has begun. We thank all of you who have mailed in a contribution. Many of you have done that. We placed envelopes in the pews this weekend. So we ask you to take an envelope home, prayerfully think about what you might be able to make as a contribution to the Catholic Charity Peel and support so many good works in our, in our diocese. And really it helps so many charitable, educational, spiritual outreach programs. So we thank you for that. On Wednesday of this week at 7 p.m. at Our Lady of Mercy Church in East Greenwich, George Weigel will speak on the topic, The Catholic Moment, The Church in the United States and the Redemption of American Democracy. Uh, George Weigel is an accomplished author, a speaker, goes around the country, actually around the world. He's very, very good. So if you uh, want to take advantage of that Wednesday at 7 p.m., also, uh, to mention that A Lady of Mercy on Saturday um, is an uh, all-day confession. So, uh, for, I think it's, it's in the bulletin, I think 9 to 3. And every hour there are three or four priests available. So, you know, if you're kind of finding that time, when can I go? A Lady of Mercy this coming Saturday. There'll be several priests there each hour, drive in. And I'll be there, I think, for one hour with all the priests in the in the area we're asked to kind of help by giving some time that day. So it's a good opportunity during this Lenten season. Our Catholicism 101 class meets uh, Monday night at 7 p.m. And finally, I don't know, I think finally, St. Joseph's Day. I know we've moved into the, uh, you know, the third Sunday of Lent, but you know, we can still think of St. Joseph today. So happy St. Joseph's Day for any of you celebrating Bonifesta. And uh, those of you who are celebrating Thursday, hope you had a good celebration of St. Patrick. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And as we go forth this evening, I invite you to join with me in singing Lift High the Cross, number 750.